This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're doing a smackdown between two new hot Windows phones on AT&T. We've got the Lumia 900 by Nokia here in exciting cyan, and we have the HTC Titan 2 with a 4.7 inch display and a 16 megapixel camera. Which is better? Watch and find out. So here we have the two top new Windows phones running Windows Phone 7.5 Mango, both available on AT&T. Both launch on April 8th. Now, obviously, the Nokia Lumia 900 got a lot more attention and marketing hype. There, there's a multi-million dollar ad campaign behind it, a lot of awareness, and it follows up with the, the very popular overseas Lumia 800. The HTC Titan 2, on the other hand, as the name implies, is the follow-up to the Titan that was released at the end of 2011. It has much in common. It's about the same size, same shape. It's got a really nice curved glass go thing going on here, though, which gives an interesting look. Same 4.7 inch display as the original Titan, but now we've got a 16 megapixel camera and LTE, that's true fast 4G. In fact, both of these phones have LTE and they're first Windows phones to have LTE. So they're quite similar, but the price is different. The Lumia, again, thanks to I think some pretty serious subsidies on Nokia's part, sells for only $99 with contract, while the Titan 2 sells for $199. So you're looking at spending more money on the Titan. So in terms of price in this SmackDown, well, obviously the Nokia wins because it's, gee, half the price on contract. If you're buying them off contract, the Nokia is $450 and the Titan 2 is $550, only $100 difference there. So those of you who are not up for an upgrade and are looking to get one of these guys, only $100 difference between the two. Now when it comes to how much you lay out for a phone, I always say... It's really not worth saving 100 bucks if you're not getting the phone you want because you're going to be stuck with it for two years and you're going to be paying a lot more for the services associated with that contract than for the phone itself. So go for the phone that you like better if you can afford to do so up front. In terms of size, this really is a testament to HTC's engineering. A 4.7 inch display here on the Titan 2 versus a 4.3 inch on the Nokia. Yet you can see they're about the same size. That, that's pretty darn impressive. So, Some folks think, wow, the Titan 2 must be absolutely immense. It's too big for me. Well, clearly not so much if you're looking at it compared to the Nokia, which is a good size phone. The Nokia is about the same size as the Samsung Galaxy Skyrocket with a 4.5 inch display. And typically 4.3 to 4.5 inch phones run about the same size. And HEC manages to keep it similar. In terms of thickness, neither of these is uber skinny. I'm going to show you our side view here. And as you can see, we're looking at the side. They both have the dedicated camera shutter button. That's actually a Microsoft requirement. They require all Windows phones to have that, so you've got a hardware camera button there. Both have their volume controls on the side. The Nokia has the power sleep wake-up button here on the side, whereas the HTC puts it up top, where I think it makes a little more sense, but I think Nokia was thinking when you're one-handing it in your right hand, you could just hit that easily. So I guess each has its merits. Both of them have the headphone jack up top. In the same corner. Now where the Titan stands out a little bit is this neat curve. You see the curve here in the chin? The glass actually curves with it. Very nice design element. Makes it a bit, look a little bit more chic and expensive. And in fact the overall build quality is quite nice on this. It's hard to tell if this is metal with a rubbery covering over it or if it's plastic, but it feels very solid, very well made. Looks like a nice high-end device. So good there. And of course Nokia fights back with their incredible polycarbonate unibody design. Just a wild looking phone. With all of these tapers here, these kind of things are usually make a phone more expensive to create when you've got a lot of curves going on. But flat on the top and the bottom improves grip a little bit. Just unique looking phone and that's a lot of its appeal. And looks do count a lot for personal consumer electronics. And then there's the fact it's also available in wild and crazy cyan. This is my personal color right here. I bought this phone and I like it a lot. Just looks like nothing else. And design, unique design really counts for a lot. Look at the iPhone 4S. So we got to give design points to Nokia for this because they made something new and different that doesn't look like anything else. Whereas the Titan looks like a lot of other HTC phones. It's a very nice looking phone, but it doesn't really stand out. It doesn't make you go ooh and ah. And the Lumia 900 will also be available in white on April 22nd, so you've got three color choices, which is nice. Your basic stately black, your wild cyan blue, and 
white, which will be a glossy finish rather than the matte finish that's on the black and the cyan ones. In terms of screen size, well, you know who wins right here. It's the Titan II, 4.7 inches. And that's really nice. If you're looking at web pages, say desktop style web pages, not mobile or web sites, you actually can read things without having to zoom in. It's, it's pretty darn nice. And also, if you're watching video, you're doing something like looking at Netflix, bigger is always better when watching decent quality video. It's a more immersive experience, so Titan gets the win for that. The, the not-so-win thing here is they're both running at 800 by 480 resolution. That's another Microsoft set-in-stone standard right now for Windows Phone 7.5. So you got the same amount of pixels on both, and they're stretched out more on the Titan, which means it looks a bit less sharp. Higher pixel density on the Nokia display makes things look a little bit sharper and clearer. And then there's a technological difference between these displays, too. The Nokia uses what's called a clear black AMOLED display. Now, blacks really are black. They're nice and inky looking, which is a hallmark of AMOLED in general, very high contrast and good blacks. And in comparison, we have these two side by side. The, the Titan... It's black background here. Actually, it almost looks like a really, really dark gray. And also, colors pop a lot more on that clear black AMOLED display. Again, it's another feature of AMOLED. Now, colors are more um, proper in their bias versus Samsung's Super AMOLED displays, for example. It's not as cold looking as those are, so it's kind of nice. You get the best parts of AMOLED, which is that really, really bright, better than life kind of color thing. Now, the HTC in comparison is very natural, very normal, but it doesn't look as wow, it doesn't pop. And we know how popular Samsung's Super AMOLED phones have been because of those popping colors. So I suspect a lot of you, if you look at these in person, you'll be more captivated by the Lumia's display because of that display technology that they use. One thing I will say is if you're into reading ebooks a lot, if you've got a white background going, I actually like the Titan a little bit better. It's kind of got a softer, whiter light. It's a little bit easier on the eyes than the stark contrast that you get out of the AMOLED display on the Nokia. In terms of speed, both of these guys are zippy fast. You can see we can move through all the UI very quickly. And they're both running on the same CPU. All Windows phones run on a second generation Qualcomm Snapdragon single core CPU. Now the latest generation have moved up to higher clock speeds. And we've got 1.5 gigahertz on the Titan 2 and 1.4 gigahertz on the Nokia, both with Adreno 205 graphics. Now, you're not going to notice a difference in 100 megahertz. No way. Sorry. So really, they're equal in terms of performance. They both have 512 megs of RAM, again, another Windows Phone standard, and they have 16 gigs of storage, with a couple of gigs less actually available for your use, but pretty much even, Stephen, on the performance part. That means for games, for playing videos, for all that kind of stuff. Now, if we talk about camera, and now this is where the Titan II is the obvious winner. Let me tell you, this thing takes amazing pictures. We'll hit our little photo viewer and just look at some pictures that I've taken with the camera. And you can see just how really pretty these are. Hopefully, they'll even come through on video. This is as good as I could take with a, a very good quality point and shoot. I'm not talking about the $100 ones. This is right on par with the one that I had that's more like 300 bucks and it has 16 megapixels as well. Macro shots with detail in the flowers, the petals. Not over sharpened, not too soft either. We get depth of field. You won't see it if you're looking on the screen of this and you're looking on the screen of the Nokia, but the minute you put these on your computer, you're going to notice a significant difference in the image quality. So for those of you who are shutter bugs, this this is really darn amazing for still shots. Now, com in comparison, here are some shots I took with the Nokia that are very nice. I, they're, they're just about up there with the iPhone 4S. Maybe not quite as good, but they're, they're very good-looking photos. And one thing about this clear black display is after you shoot a photo, you're going to think it's the most brilliant camera in the world because it's really sharp, colorful, and contrasty. When you move it to your computer, you'll say, okay, that's a nice camera phone shot. Good, good camera phone, but I can tell. So, in a different league but it's still a nice camera. Now, when it comes to video quality for video recording, surprisingly, we're, we're pretty even Steven here. You would think that 16 megapixel camera comes in for the big win. No, not so much. They both record 720p video. That's, again, another Windows Phone standard thing, and it doesn't support recording at 1080p. Now, Microsoft has said that they are going to introduce 1080p video recording, but will it come to these older devices? It's hard to say. I don't know if they're going to require a dual-core CPU to do that or not like they do on Android, but 
It's a possibility. I am certainly not promising that, though, because Microsoft hasn't made that clear yet. But anyway, video quality is actually a little bit better on the Nokia, a little bit clearer, sharper. I get the feeling that HEC didn't work as hard on the video software as they did for the photo shooting, and it's, it's really mediocre. Now, how about custom software? With Windows Phone, each manufacturer can make their own custom applications that are available only for their brand phones as value added. So you see, if you go to the Windows Marketplace on the phone, we've got HTC apps on the HTC phone and Nokia Collection on the Nokia. And if we take a look at what those offer, we've got HTC Hub, which is a kind of neat weather, news, and stock kind of application that is pre-installed on the phone. Some of these others you download. We've got HTC Watch, which is for their movie and TV show rental streaming service. We've got their Locations app, Connected Media for a DLNA of sorts. Both are offering Tango. Doc mode is if you want to use it as a bedside clock. Lists for shopping lists, to-do lists, that kind of thing. A notes app, a converter. Flashlight to use your flash on the back as a flashlight. Calculator. There's also a calculator built into Windows Phone, by the way. Compass. The love application and connection setup. Now on the Nokia, we have Sports, Univision, CNN, ESPN. Now CNN and ESPN are available anyway in the Windows Marketplace. 100 Days of School for your kids' entertainment. Creative Studio, which adds Panorama Shot. Now, Panorama Shot is already built into the HTC as part of the phone software, and Nokia's Creative Studio adds that all along in, excuse me, along with all sorts of effects, like the ones that distort your friends' faces in a funny way, and, and some other really artistic ones that turn your, your photographs into line art sketches and all that kind of stuff, so it's pretty nice stuff. App Highlights is their own selection of apps, which really is a nice way to discover applications because they tend to pick some of the better, higher quality applications. And we've got something that's pretty special. We have Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, and Nokia Transit. Now, Nokia acquired a very large mapping company, and they have very good mapping technology. So in addition to Bing Maps with navigation and, of course, AT&T Navigator on both phones, you get Nokia's mapping solution, which includes, obviously, help for driving and help for those of you who take mass transit. And we have a contacts transfer application that tries to help you in case you need to transfer your contacts from another phone or platform. So that's the value added software from each manufacturer, and they're both actually pretty solid. I think Nokia Drive might resonate with a lot of you guys who use mapping and are not into Bing. In terms of call quality, both are good phones. The Titan is much improved from the Titan 2. Incoming voice is clear. It's not super loud. It's about average for a GSM phone. Outgoing voice is very loud and clear. Some people actually complain it might be too loud. So if that's the case, speak softly. Nokia has awesome incoming and outgoing audio. Volume for incoming is actually surprisingly loud for a GSM phone. And Usually I keep my phone set to about three quarters of maximum earpiece volume for calls, and in this, oh, 50% is about as much as I can take. It's that loud. It really sounds like a mini speakerphone. They both have LTE 4G on AT&T, and they can fall back to 3G and HSPA+, Plus, which AT&T calls 4G. Carriers play a little loose and fast with what they call 4G, but that gets you 21 megabit per second, so that's also pretty good if you're not in one of AT&T's coverage areas. Download speeds on both of these phones on LTE, we are in an LTE coverage area, it's really hard to avoid LTE, in fact, lucky us, are similar. We got about 19 megabit per second down and 5.8 up on the Titan 2, and we got 18 megabit per second down on average on the Nokia, and 7 megabit per second up. So you're looking at about the same thing, and both have the mobile hotspot feature. If you have AT&T's higher-end data plans, tethering is included, wireless tethering, and you can use these as a mobile hotspot. Now lastly, there's battery life. The battery capacity in both of these guys is pretty similar. We have 1830 on the Nokia Lumia 900, and we have 1730 on the HTC Titan 2. But HTC claims only four hours of talk time versus seven for the Nokia. Interesting that. Now, I don't generally talk that much on the phone every day, to be honest. I don't speak for seven hours. That's a little bit harder of a thing to test unless you happen to be a serious talker. But in average use, where I make, say, 30 minutes of phone calls, I use two push email accounts turned on, lots of web browsing, lots of photo taking, say, shooting about 30 shots or so, watching a couple of YouTube videos, and playing music with the screen off for an hour. Both of these actually last pretty well. The Titan made it to 9 o'clock at night doing that, and the Nokia made it to about 11 o'clock at night. So you're going to get a little bit longer battery life on the Nokia, and supposedly they really tuned particularly the LTE radio aggressively to try to make sure that it didn't drag on battery life too much. 
Both of these have the battery sealed inside, so you're not going to be able to swap in the spare in the field. So that's our smackdown between the HTC Titan 2 and the Nokia Lumia 900, both available now on AT&T. And honestly, either way you go, they're both very nice phones. You might even argue that you have some more expensive stuff going on in the Titan, that curved glass, a bigger display, and that 16 megapixel camera. Be sure to watch both of our video reviews of these devices. We have one of each of these and read our full written reviews. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.